Hello and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Carrie Oderman with UATV. Following the revolution of dignity in 2014, one of the first major legislative initiatives was the law on higher education. This launched the radical reform of the higher education sector aimed at establishing an autonomous system aligned with the European higher education and research areas. The National Agency for Quality Assurance and Higher Education has now been established in Ukraine and the UK is trying to help make Ukraine a transformational change in modernizing its higher education through the sharing of British knowledge and expertise. Joining us in the studio to expand on this topic is Ian Welsh, Assistant Director, Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education from the UK. Ian, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. That was a mouthful. Since 2014, there's a make, they've been making changes here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me what's been happening? Well, at the current, currently, higher education regulation in Ukraine um, is based around a system uh, that's conventionally been to do with inspection. And the ambition is to move it from that sort of system to one that's more to do with developmental engagement. So developmental engagement would typically be more supportive, more to do with guidance, more working in partnership with institutions, less kind of us and them, and more working with people to make things better in higher education. But there is a quality assurance element here, and how does that fit in? Well, the developmental engagement doesn't necessarily um, mean that you don't have the rigour of quality assurance. It means that in diagnosing problems, you actually help the institution to address those problems rather than simply penalise them for them. And how is your organisation assisting um, the, the British Council? How is it supporting the higher education in Ukraine? Well, the British Council is interested in um, helping Ukraine develop its higher education in order to enable its, um, its graduates to become more employable. Now, one of the ways around that is to raise the standards and the esteem with which higher education is, is, is held in, in Ukraine. Um, and our part in that is to work with the British Council who, and work with the um, um, uh, Ukraine regulator, NACI, and um, try to enable them to help their experts move from an inspectorial point of view to a more developmental point of view. So one of the things that we've been doing over the last three days here is working with um, a group of, um, a, 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 of Ukrainian experts um, to um, uh, uh, look at strategies which will enable them to help institutions move from a more inspectorial approach to a more developmental approach. Now, changes and trusted struct to change trusted structures, it's always difficult. You spoke with many educators and a wide audience of academics. Mm -hmm. um, how did they react to some of your suggestions? Oh, extremely positively. Um, we were very impressed with the positivity of the delegates, with the commitment, with the enthusiasm. I think there's a real thirst for this sort of change. And I think there's a real need for this sort of change. And it's not to say that there isn't a significant challenge there, because of course there is, but it's not an overwhelming challenge. And I think it can be accomplished by these committed, enthusiastic, very uh, able experts disseminating their uh, knowledge and expertise to, I think it's gonna be something like 3,000 other experts working around the country in order to be able to move the regulatory um, approach from an inspectorial basis to a more developmental ba uh, basis. There's challenges in there around um, um, the cultures in which people have grown up in the past, of course, but you know, cultures can be challenged and I think the developmental approach can be demonstrated by people's behaviour, by their attitude, by their professionalism and it may not be an overnight change but it will happen because people will um, witness that it actually works. Now, I'm admittedly not an expert on this area, mm -hmm. but is it possible that the current structures the structures that you're improving upon also are reminiscent of the Soviet era? So people are more than, be, more than interested in being proactive and changing towards the more mm -hmm. Western European structures? Well, I, I, as far as I can gather, I think that's probably the root of it. Um, and that's, that's, that's entirely understandable. 
and we're kind of lucky in the UK we've had what 20 odd years of regulation that's based around development developing institutions and working with them in order to make higher education better so one of the reasons why we've got involved in this is because we can offer our experience to our Ukrainian colleagues um, to offer them our learning points from things that have happened within our experience um, w w which they can then carry through to their own to their own um, approaches. And do a lot of the practices from the UK carry over to the Ukraine? Is it about the same amount of students attending university for the same uh, amount of time? I think there's differences. Uh, the Ukrainian higher education system is, uh, the, 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 there's a lot more students, there's a lot more people here, a lot more, a lot more universities. Um, the, 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 there are significant differences, I think, but the transferability, I think, is, 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 is there. Um, it doesn't really matter how many students you're talking about, it's the approach that you're talking about as being transferable. Um, so uh, it, 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 the, the, the size of the task just gets expanded out, really. Oftentimes, Ukraine and Ukrainians are complimented for their well-educated yeah. population, yeah. literacy rates. Absolutely. Um, did you get any pushback? Some people saying it's not broke, don't fix it? No, not at all. There was um, a sense in which um, we would quite rightly need to explain aspects of our approach, which is absolutely we, we, we would, which we're fine about, um, and sort of unpick them. You know, why do you do that? How did that work out? So why don't you do it in that, that way? That's about healthy curiosity, I think. That's about a thirst for learning. And I think that's one of the things that we took, um, we, we made great pains to do, is to try to expose people to um, situations that we'd been involved in, that we'd learned from, and enable people to discuss how they would approach their situation, how they would learn from them. Now, are you advising people at all levels? Because if the, the primary and secondary school stay somewhat antiquated and people then come to university and have a completely different learning style, there's mm -hmm. an adjustment period. So are you trying to advise from kindergarten all the way to university? No, we're not. All we're interested in, because uh, it's the Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education that I work for, all we're interested in is higher education. There's other agencies, I guess, that would be interested in pre-higher education. Would it make sense to maybe cooperate with them on some level? Because I can imagine that if students have been taught one way when they get to mm -hmm. university and are taught another way, there is an adjustment period then. Well, maybe. Um, but, you know, a lot of university regulation isn't necessarily about the teaching. It's about the way that the institutions are run and about the involvement of students in their own learning. So there is a sort of um, a significant difference, really, between what happens at school and what happens in a university. And I think that's probably the same throughout the world, really. So higher education tends to fall back on um, how the student is pushing their own learning rather than having it handed down to them. So, you know, we're kind of interested in how does the institution enable students to take advantage of the learning opportunities that are put in there in front of them. Can you talk a little bit about the examples of how these students are included in their own learning process? Yeah. Um, one of the um, uh, initiatives that we've been talking about over the last um, f uh, few days in, um, uh, in, in our time in Ukraine has been around um, what we would call, what, well, it's about student involvement and uh, examples of student involvement. So, um, for instance, we would fully expect in the UK that students would be involved in some of the deliberative structures within an institution. They'd be involved in the, the development of quality assurance mechanisms within a university. Because at the end of the day, who knows most about higher education? It's the students who are actually exposed to it. So um, one of the great commitments that we've got in the UK now that we try to convey in, uh, in Ukraine is to involve students in that partnership, in that journey to getting their higher education qualifications. F further to that, we've tried to involve students in the actual review mechanism as well. So um, whereas previously, uh, certainly in the UK and I think in Ukraine as well, there were um, experts and uh, academic experts that would descend on a university and look at it. A few years ago in the UK, we introduced students as part of that review uh, group. So you'd have academic experts and students in the same context as reviewers looking at universities, doing the same job, being paid the same amount of money, having the same expectations placed against them. And what that did was enable students to um, have an application for their expertise. Because they, you know, they, they know about higher education and they have have a vested interest in developing the higher education because they're on the receiving end of it. 
how to how do you measure the success of your your advice? Um, what kind of benchmarks are you looking at to see um, how the higher education in Ukraine is progressing? I think the benchmark's got to be about how the rollout to these 3,000 experts happens. We were lucky to talk to around about 40 experts in the room, um, and as I say, they were truly impressive um, um, a group of people. Um, and I've got every faith that they'll now be able to go out and cascade what they've learnt to the um, larger group of, of, of experts around the country. Um, and I think one of the benchmarks for the success of what we've done will be around the success of that. But I, 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 don't, have any, I don't have any qualms about that. I think that's going to be um, a success story. So Ukrainian students are already in a good position and you're going to help put them in a better position. Yeah, because if, if you can improve the quality of institutions, you're improving the quality of education of those students. You know, non, nobody's in this business um, not to do a good job for students. Everybody wants to do a good job for students. Institutions, the regulators, the teachers, everybody's focused on making this, the student's experience better. And if we can do that through um, enabling um, institutions to take more responsibility for the quality assurance internally, to develop their quality assurance, to share good practice across institutions, to build up expertise within the, within the sector, then I, I think that's got to be a good news story for the students. Now you spoke with about 40 educators and administrators. When will you be back? <laughs> when I'm invited. Um, I, I, I have no idea. But, um, you know, I'll be keeping a close eye on what's happening in, in, in well, Ukraine. Well, we hope when you come back to Ukraine, you visit our studios again. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming. You. That was Ian Welsh, Assistant Director, Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education from the United Kingdom. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.